very hard to define Richard Long because what he did was not land art, was not performance art. It was something, could be conceptual art really. And that's really what I like about the artist that I'm bringing to Australia, is that they don't fit easily into any box. That if anything, they invent a genre of art, like Pike did, like Christo did, like Gilbert and George did. They were the ones who then had followers, in a way. Richard went to the same art school as Gilbert and George, and the early photographs of Gilbert and George were done by Richard. But what Richard started to do is walks. He walked in a circle, or he walked for a day, or he walked for 100 miles. He recorded those walks with observations that he then turned into artworks, principally photographic works. But what he also did is somewhere along his walks, he would collect pieces of rock or pieces of wood and he would arrange them in a line or in a circle and just leave it there without giving the location so people couldn't find them or if by accident somebody walked that way and found the lines of stones well 99% of the population wouldn't think oh that's a Richard Long he did the same in a gallery. He would collect a number of rocks or twigs from trees and arrange them in various formats, usually circles or lines or rectangles. I asked Richard to come to Australia and he was quite keen as he was doing a project called 100 Mile Walks, and he did them in various countries. He did it in the bogs of Ireland already, in the prairies of Canada, in a bamboo forest in Japan, and he wanted to do one in Australia. So my invitation was really timely. So he came to Australia and Richard at that time was, I think, in his 30s, was very tall. He was like, like a boy scout. Um, great sense of humor, very nicely spoken. Again, a very different personality to the artist before. I mean, although he was English, went to the same art school as Gilbert and George, couldn't find somebody more different than they were. To do his walk, he got on the train at, to Broken Hill. He got off somewhere, he didn't say where, and he pitched a tent, and for a number of days that it took him, he walked a straight line back and forth from his tent Till it reached a hundred miles and during that walk he made photographs of the landscape. A number of those became an artwork. When he came back to Sydney he was going to make an artwork for the art gallery and that was a stone line of Blue River rocks that he personally selected and had them sent to the gallery. And again, it was in the entrance court and it stretched almost from the entrance to the very end of it. That is one work that is permanent and was donated to the gallery and the gallery has it in their collection. He went then to Melbourne and at the National Gallery, he did a different work. He himself went to collect bushwood and he made an enormous circle in the old Murdoch court, which looked really 
very romantic, very beautiful. Unfortunately, when that show was finished, uh, the gallery never thought about it and destroyed the work. Richard was actually quite upset about it. He won the Turner Prize. He represented Britain at the Venice Biennale. He is in his 70s now and is still hard at work and I still keep in touch with him and stayed friends. He is a remarkable man. My favorite piece of his, very early in his career, in a field of tall grass, he walked back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and created a line by trodding the grass down. And it's the most poetic work, and it, I think, typifies our projects that it's there for a few hours, for a few days, and then there's only the memory of it.